Welcome to Electron Line. It turns out there is actually a second thermostat that controls the temperature in the Earth's atmosphere. On the last video, we saw the seven Boltzmann's law and how that allowed much more radiation to escape to space when the temperature on the surface of the Earth increased by even a small amount. But there's a second factor at play as well. When we take a look at the black body radiation curve, we realize as the temperature increases, the peak of the radiation curve shifts to the left to smaller wavelengths, to higher frequencies. And what that does, well actually it does two things. The first thing that it does is you can see here where the absorption band is for carbon dioxide for the 15 micrometer bending mode, the most significant absorption band of carbon dioxide. Notice when the peak begins to shift to the left, first of all a much greater amount of radiation is being emitted by the surface of the Earth, but since the peak is shifted to the left, it turns out that that main band of carbon dioxide that absorbs the energy coming from the surface of the Earth in the, the wavelength from about 14 to 16 micrometers, you can see that that begins to shift to the left, uh, to the right, relative to where the peak is, so it has a less and lesser effect overall in the amount of energy being emitted into space versus the amount of energy being absorbed by the carbon dioxide. Now for colder temperatures, like at minus 20 degrees centigrade, you can see that it's a little bit more to the, uh, it's a little bit closer to the peak, so it has a greater effect. In polar regions or during the winter time, carbon dioxide seems to be more effective and therefore absorb a greater percentage of the, of the radiation curve. But as the temperature in the atmosphere continues to climb and the peak of the black body radiation curve shifts to the left, you can see that as a percentage, the amount of heat being absorbed by the carbon dioxide percentage-wise drops significantly and thus at very high temperatures it's not as effective in keeping in the heat as it does when it's at colder temperatures. It almost seems like again there's this perfect thermostat that keeps us warmer when the temperatures drop to very low temperatures and it keeps us a little bit cooler by not absorbing as much energy when the atmosphere and the surface of the Earth become very hot. I should really say the surface of the Earth because that's really what causes the emission. In addition to that, notice here what we call the radiation window. The about 12% of the total energy received from the Sun, 48% of that re reaches the Earth's surface and about a quarter of that re-emits back into space through that radiation window, the window where not a lot of energy is absorbed and so you can see that as the peak shifts to the left and increases in height that there's an enormous amount of heat sent back into space unhindered by the molecules in the atmosphere. So it appears that, yes again, the black body radiation curve and the shift of the peak causes carbon dioxide to be less effective at high temperatures, more effective at low temperatures, and shifts the window in such a way that a large percentage of the energy radiated from the surface makes it back to space, again regulating the temperature of the Earth. It's quite remarkable that this is the case. Now notice, you can see here where the radiation peaks are at the various temperatures. It's about 11.46 micrometers at minus 20, 10.62 micrometers at 0 degrees centigrade, 9.9 .9 micrometers at 20 degrees centigrade, and 9.27 micrometers at 40 degrees centigrade. And realizing that that carbon dioxide band kind of straddles the 15 micrometer uh, region, about from 14 to 16 micrometers. So again, the shift to the left causes that to have less enough effect when the temperatures increase quite a bit on the surface. And that's how the Earth regulates its temperature.